Meanwhile, the Trump administration taking an issue that's drawn widespread criticism and lawsuits, even pushing that issue further than it has before. It has to do with the, det the detention of migrant families. Acting Secretary of Homeland Security Kevin McAleenan just announced a new plan to get rid of the limit on how long it can detain migrant families. This is what the secretary, the acting secretary, said to reporters this morning. It allows us to, to keep families together through their immigration proceedings. We have three family residential centers, uh, about 3,000 total uh, family uh, beds in, in those centers. So what this will do is substantially increase our ability to end the catch and release uh, challenges that have fueled this crisis for families. Let me bring in NBC correspondent Julia Ainsley, who covers the Department of Homeland Security, and Krish Vignaraja, president and CEO of the Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Service, also a former policy director to First Lady Michelle Obama. Um, Julia, walk us through this, this new plan, and I also understand that, that you have some brand new reporting to share with us as well. I do. So first of all, to the plan this morning, this is their workaround on the Flores Agreement that only allowed children to be held for 20 days. And in 2015, they said that applies to children even in custody with their parents. They now want to say that ICE can go in and license these facilities. They don't need the state to license them. And somehow that is their workaround. But what we can be sure of and what the administration officials are sure of already is that this will be challenged in court. So even though there's a 60-day effective date, they don't expect that to kick in in 60 days because they expect to be sued and to go through a legal process on this. Uh, but I do have new reporting I can share with you now, Craig. Uh, we have documents that show that there is an executive order under consideration by the Trump administration that would allow states and local jurisdictions to deny refugees the right to resettle there. The, according to this, it says the federal government will resettle refugees only where both relevant state and local governments have consented to participate in the refugee resettlement program. So this is a huge blow to human rights organizations who believe that refugees should be resettled in communities with people from their home country to allow them to build that community as they assimilate into American life after they've already fleed violence and persecution in their home countries. This would allow those states to say, no, we aren't taking them in. The only exemption is is for spouses and children. Again, this is all under review, and I should say spouses and children going to a place where a family member already lives. But this is under review. It could be tightened. Some of this could change. But as of now, we know the administration is considering allowing states and local jurisdictions to say no to refugees who want to resettle there. And Chris, your, your organization works with these migrant families um, at the border. How will this proposed executive order uh, change what they face when they come to this country? How will uh, the plan that the acting Homeland Security Secretary outlined this morning, how would that plan also affect these families? It will cause uh, significant um, issues and exacerbate what we're already seeing. I mean, I think part of the issue is that when you allow for children, for babies to be put in prison-like conditions, you're reverting to internment camps. And the question I think everyone should be asking is, how can the leader of the free world revert to the days of internment camps? And I think the second thing that deeply concerns us is that here we have a situation where we're allowing for ICE to regulate um, and to license these facilities. It's essentially allowing the wolf to guard the sheep. And if you want to have a sense of what kinds of conditions we could likely see under this new rule, just think about the fact that under the current Flores protections, which um, obviously prioritize the children's interests, we have already seen at least six children die, thousands of children that have been stripped from their parents' arms, as well as thousands of more that have been allegedly abused. Under these new uh, rules, we know that these conditions are going to just become far worse. Uh, Chris, what do you make of the timing of, of, of all of this? Do we, do we surmise that there, there may be some sort of motivation uh, behind the timing? Look, I mean, I do think that it isn't coincidence only that we are seeing an uptick in the number of new immigration rules um, that 
coincide with a lot of uh, kind of downturn um, in the economic forecast in terms of you know the prospects of a recession. Um, just in the last several days, we've seen the public charge rule that was instituted last week. Um, the week before, we did have uh, murmurings that the White House was considering zeroing out a program um, allowing refugees to be resettled, a program that had always had the highest um, bipartisan support of really any of the policies in place. President Reagan actually resettled the highest number of refugees. And so I do worry that some of this is being driven um, by a, a desire to distract from other news. Chris Vignaraja, Chris, thank you. Julia, thank you for sharing that new reporting as well. We are keeping uh, a close eye on the White House where President Trump has uh, reportedly, we're, we're told now, stopped to do as he does, speak with the reporters there on the lawn before he leaves for Kentucky. We will bring you those comments as soon as we get the tape.